Hello and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, that's to be expected because we are too. This is our first YouTube video, although we've been around on Instagram for a few years. Let me introduce you to Echo the Good Wolf. She's a five-year-old low-content wolf dog and the love of my life. I'm Crystal Lynn, and according to Echo, you really don't need to know any more about me as she's the star of this channel. We have so many ideas for future videos and are really hoping to create enjoyable and usable content to do our part in helping educate people about wolf dogs and the specialized care they need. But today I wanted to share Echo and my stories and hopefully highlight the importance of treating these creatures ethically and with kindness. I'll start with my story since it's shorter and much less interesting. I fell in love with wolves in the fourth grade after researching them for a report. In my exuberance, I got it in my head that I wanted a pet wolf of my very own. And through my research into the legalities and practicalities of wolf ownership, I learned that owning a pure wolf is very much illegal in the United States. I also learned about wolf dogs and discovered a wolf dog facility writing a blog about their rescue animals. It was through this that I developed an understanding of the challenges wolf dogs face. Such a high number of them are sold to unprepared people who are incapable of meeting their long list of special needs. And as you might imagine, these placements usually fail in the worst ways for the wolf dogs involved. Euthanasia is sometimes a far kinder fate than the realities these animals face. And while there are people out there prepared and committed to providing a beautiful life for their wolf dogs, to me, I can't find an ethical reason to support breeding more of them while so many currently living are suffering and dying. So I put the dream of wolf dog ownership out of my mind until one October evening in 2018 when I heard about a massive rescue effort taking place in California for a group of wolf dogs known as the High Desert Wolves. And this brings you to Echo's story. Echo was one of almost 200 feral wolf dogs living in deplorable conditions in Northern California. All animals were slated for euthanasia by the county unless they were removed from the property by a designated deadline. Echo was about 18 months old and already nursing a litter of puppies. As fate would have it, she and seven other mothers along with their puppies ended up at a facility only 40 minutes away from me. I was instantly intrigued. From the first moment I saw her, I felt a surge of recognition for her and an undeniable pull towards her. I felt that she and I were on a path together that I could not turn back from. So I spent the next six weeks sitting in her enclosure, tossing treats on the ground and coaxing her to allow physical contact. It was not a quick or gratifying process. No part of her was yearning for human contact, and she really just wanted to be left alone. When I finally got a leash on her and was able to bring her home, I didn't know if she would ever become accustomed to life with people, or if she would remain semi-feral for the rest of her life. But she deserved a good life either way, and I was committed to giving it to her. I was surprised how quickly she began to show her first signs of attachment to me. Born not out of love and affection, but mostly out of loneliness and a fear of new surroundings, I guess she decided I was better than nothing and started choosing to be near me. I don't think she felt her first pangs of fondness for me until our first hike. Paws on the trail, tail relaxed, smelling all the smells and rolling in all the grasses, it unlocked something deep inside of her, a love for nature and exploration passed down into all wolf dogs from their wild ancestors. Hiking is Echo's love language. In the first few months, Echo learned a lot about what it is to live in the human world. She gained a ton of confidence and chose to follow my lead and partner with me in a way I never could have dreamed. And while I still don't know how much love she has for me, she offers a tremendous amount of loyalty and trust in me as a leader. Training became less about behavior and more about learning a common language between us, requiring us both to listen to the other and come to an agreement about how to work in harmony with each other. She learned to love children, my four-year-old daughter specifically. 
In fact, to this day, she prefers children to big people and is not shy about chastising us if she thinks our supervision of said little people is lax. She learned not to eat cats, something that is hit or miss among wolf dogs. She learned to sleep inside and ride in a car, walk on a leash, open Christmas presents, have a bath, she still hates this one, and go to the vet. She's not fond of this one either. Sadly, she also learned how to open gates, open doors, destroy furniture, and smack me in the face with a pillow when she wants me to wake up in the morning. Being her guardian and helping her confidence blossom so that she can live her best life has been one of the most rewarding endeavors of my lifetime. She's the reason I feel so passionately about wolf dog rescue, about giving the hopeless cases a second chance. Almost nobody in the wolf dog community thought it was possible to save the high desert wolves. There were too many, they were too feral, badly bred, sickly, and in many eyes, they were completely worthless. A small handful of very brave people worked day and night to get them all out. An echo landed in my lap. I will be forever grateful that she did. We really hope to see you again on future videos, and if you enjoyed this one, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with other animal lovers. Thanks.